What's up, guys? I am back. Back from, uh, the Outer Rim. No, actually, um, <laughs> I'm back from a very long, extended vacation slash general laziness. Um, <laughs> no, let me, let, let me explain. Um, I went to Comic-Con last month, and that was a blast, I'll tell you. Um, it was just completely awesome, except for the Star Wars, um, display. I'll talk a little bit more about it, um, in a little bit. But yeah, I went to Comic-Con, and then I went to a couple concerts out of town. And then after that, I just sort of totally blazed around the house. <laughs> if that's even a word, lazed. Yes, I'm gonna make it a word. I lazed around the house, doing nothing but watching anime and reading manga. So, there. That's what I did. Anyway, uh, to make it up to you guys, I decided to do something really fun. And that was to um, walk you through my creative process when I make a scene using Star Wars Scene Maker. And as you can see, I have the app up and running on my iPad. Um, and um, I've got... I've got pretty much all the scenarios in here, um, every single one of them, and, uh, sorry, I have, like, a little bit of an allergy here. You're probably gonna hear me sniffle throughout this whole thing. Yeah, that's real professional. Um, anyways, let's just jump right into it. Let's just make a scene using the Thee Generator Duel. So we're gonna start that up. Okay. So now that we've got the scene up and running, um, I'm going to create a scene. I'm actually going to break this video series up into three parts. And in this first part, we're going to talk about setting up. And setup is always important when you're making a scene. You've got something visualized in your head and you kind of have an idea of, of what the action is and what the dialogue is going to be like, but it's always important to get everything into position before you hit that start, that action button, uh, or the record button, ac record action button that's down there on the bottom right portion of the app. And, um, you know, I don't know how many tutorial videos are out there uh, regarding Scene Maker, but uh, just, a, just a quick review, if you're not familiar with the app. Um, what you're seeing right here is the interface where you create the scene. Um, I'll go clockwise, starting from the top left. You have the um, character button, which is R2-D2 with a plus sign. And if you hit that, um, you'll get a choice of characters to choose you can, that you can add to the scene. And then over on the top, did I say top right? Well, it was top left. I don't know. I'm zoning. That's what happens when you take a long break from making videos. You just totally zone. Anyways, top right corner. This is your um, menu button where you have the home screen, the save button, the um, revert button, which will reset pretty much everything that you set in the scene, and the help button. Okay, down on the bottom right, you've got your record button and a bunch of other parameters um, that I'll explain later. And then finally on the bottom left you've got your camera buttons and they're color-coded. Uh, camera 1 is green, camera 2 is blue, and camera 3 is orange. So those are your cameras and you have your scene and you, you're set up with a default number of characters um, for each scene, and it's kind of based on the scenario that it was in the movie. So this is the Thee Generator duel, uh, which means that there's going to be Obi-Wan, Qui-Gon, and Darth Maul. Now, um, one of the first things I like to do when I set up a scene is determine which characters I'm going to use. Am I going to use any of these new ones, um, or am I going to just stick with the characters that are already on here. Um, I've decided for this particular uh, scene, 
I'm only going to need two characters. I've decided I only want to have Obi-Wan and Darth Maul, so I'm going to click on Qui-Gon, and when you click on a character, you'll notice on the top left, a trash can appears, and that's how you delete the character. So Qui-Gon's out of the picture. By the way, if I wanted to add Qui-Gon back in, this is really elementary, and I apologize if you already know how to run this app. You just scroll down back and you can add him and you would uh, click and drag and let go and then he will appear right back on the scene. But I don't want him right now, so he's gone. Now, the next thing I usually do is get my characters into position. Now, these are the default positions, of course. Um, if you remember in the, fa the, the Phantom Menace that uh, uh, Qui-Gon and Darth Maul were fighting in the Circle Pit of Doom room, and Obi-Wan got stuck behind the laser gates that will open and close um, at regular intervals. But for this um, scene that I'm envisioning, I'm actually going to move them further down the hall. So in order to do that, it's basically just click and drag the character down the hall. Okay, now that Obi-Wan's in position, I'm going to come back and move Darth Maul so that we can have a nice, good old-fashioned lightsaber face-off. All right, so now that Darth Maul is in position, uh, I'm just going to turn him a little bit. I'm going to rotate him. Uh, maybe I'll move him over here. Just this way. I'll rotate him. And I'll probably end up rotating Obi-Wan so that they'll be looking at each other. So, it, yeah, it kind of looks like they are looking at each other. And that's good. Okay, so now that my characters are in position... I'm going to come back and I'm going to move some cameras around. You can move uh, the cameras around during your scene, during the making of your scene, but I noticed once you place your characters in position, you can't exactly relocate them again. Um, that's one of the quirks I've noticed um, about Scene Maker. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I like that. Um, yeah. Uh, again, it's one of the quirks that I noticed about Scene Maker. Once you hit that action button on the lower right corner um, and you set your scene into motion, uh, your characters are pretty much fixed wherever you place them at the beginning of the scene. And that's why it's important to have them placed before you actually hit the action button for the first time. Uh, but when you when you want to move cameras around, it's a little different. And I'll illustrate for you um, once we get going. So camera one looks good. Um, I'm wondering, maybe I should make it a little bit tighter? Yeah, I'll make it a little tighter. I'm very finicky with my cameras, by the way. Just a touch tighter. That's good. That's actually a lot better. So that's camera one. I'm going to move one more camera, which will be camera two. Okay, I've got camera two moved, and now I just want to swing it around. And then lower it so that it's in position. I don't want it to be too low, but I want it to be low enough so that I can see both Obi-Wan and Darth Maul in one shot. There we go. That's great. Level off the camera right now. So, for me, I'm pretty picky where my cameras go. I'm always checking them. See, one, and to check them, you just click on the camera itself, and you click that Eye that's on the top and that'll show you the camera view. I'm always checking my cameras as I go. Okay, so now that I got camera one and two ready, 
I think with camera three, I think what I'll do with camera three is I'm simply just going to swing this around. And that'll give me a shot down the hall with these guys. All right, so let's get back to camera one. Now there's some options that you have with the cameras when you click on it. There's an option for the camera to be in a fixed position. Um, and then there's an option for the camera to pan and follow a particular character that you designate. And then there's finally the option for the camera to actually fly along with that character. And uh, this is camera one. And it is behind Obi-Wan. So that means I want it to actually fly around and follow Obi-Wan. Camera two. Whoops. That's camera one. Camera one, sorry. Let's do this again. Camera one is not behind Obi-Wan. It's actually behind Darth Maul. So camera one will be following Darth Maul. Camera two will be following Obi-Wan. And camera three will simply be a fixed camera. So let's review. Again, always checking my cameras. Camera one. Camera two. And finally, camera three. And the reason why I'm always obsessing over the cameras, it's, it's pretty simple. Once you set the scene into motion, things happen really quickly. And if you lose track of which camera is doing what, um, you're going to have to go back and edit it. And it's a real pain in the butt to edit things uh, once you set this thing into motion. So now that everything is in motion, uh, one of the other things that I like to do often, since this app tends to be quite buggy, is to hit this menu button here on the top and save my scene. So it says, are you want to save the scene? And I say, yeah. I do that frequently. It's kind of like old school Microsoft Word. You know, you don't know if that thing's going to crash or something's going to go wrong, or the power's going to go out or whatever. So you're going to save the scene frequently. So that, my friends, is the first installment in my multi-part short little walkthrough slash tutorial scene. Uh, scene maker uh, funness. <laughs> And I apologize for it being totally random because, yeah, I have been very, oh, unpolished lately. Because, yes, I have not made a, a video. I haven't uploaded a video in YouTube for, I believe, a month. I've just been gone, gone, gone. But anyways, in our next installment, we're going to set things into motion. And we are going to get... Uh, some action going and I'll, I'll give you a little bit of an insight as to what I have planned with Obi-Wan and Darth Maul and you're gonna love it so thanks for tuning in uh, keep an eye out for the next video and if you like what you see hit that subscribe button I'll see you guys next time very soon I promise <laughs>